Is there a major difference? Let's say you are facing faced with a dog that's acutely bleeding. Is there a difference in the criticalist approach to the internist approach, or what, what would you be your initial approach? Okay, dog comes into your practice, it's bleeding. I don't think that there's a difference in no. terms of anyone's training. So I think when faced with an acutely bleeding patient, the most important thing, obviously, is maintain enough blood in the body to deliver oxygen to the cells. That's mm -hmm. the cornerstone of therapy for any disease, it's especially important with a severely anemic or bleeding patient because it's the red cells that carry the oxygen. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal, stop the bleeding. I think a good starting point, uh, and this obviously goes without saying that nothing is more important than a really thorough physical and history. So we start there always, nothing is more important than that. Yeah. Beyond that though, uh, often our patients, um, in order for us to help them, we have to get <laughs> data. And yeah. for criticalists, internists, general practitioners, I think the standard of care now for what we would consider an adequate minimum database from the lab would be a CBC biochemistry panel that would include electrolytes. I always say that you can't call it a chemistry panel if it doesn't have electrolytes. They're that important. Um, and a complete urinalysis, and that means also looking at a urine sediment exam. So with this acutely bleeding patient, the steps I would take as a criticalist would be the same that all veterinarians would take. Stop active hemorrhage if you can. Mm -hmm. Stabilize by getting intravenous access and providing fluid support, blood pressure support, giving blood products, transfusions if necessary, and then getting this minimum database. And that's the initial assessment. And from there, with that information, we may have our answer. Mm -hmm. um, or, and more often than not, we need to go further. We might get an idea, this patient's anemic. Our CBC shows we have a marked decrease in the hematocrit. Then we would need to determine is it regenerative or not by looking at, at the reticulocyte count and deciding if we needed to get imaging done if it's a trauma patient, is there a splenic laceration with an abdominal hemorrhage or is, are there spherocytes on the peripheral blood smear that would indicate uh, hemolytic anemia process? Do we need to pursue causes of that? primary immune disease or secondary to infectious disease. So that would be the approach. But it starts, it always starts with a thorough history of physical exam, and then whenever possible, getting this initial minimum database done. Mm. Which would